Did you know, for example, by 2030, 26 million Brits will be obese? Did you know if they all jumped up and down at the same time, they might lose a little bit of bloody weight? <laughs> the average woman loses her virginity at 17. How's about that, then? <laughs> And 70% of men don't get enough fibre in their diet. Tough shit. <laughs> what do you think people have been talking about over the last week? One of our MPs, uh, Nadine Doris, has oh, decided yes. the best way she can get ahead as a politician is to go into the jungle. And eat kangaroo testicles. <laughs> she's decided to enter I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, and not spotted that she's an MP, and it's not called I'm an MP, I should probably do some work. <laughs> Since taxpayers pay me to do my work. So she's gone out there. She's all, I've already seen enough of her. It hasn't even started. <laughs> I've already seen pictures of her Topless. sunbathing in the nude. And her breasts are actually a very good analogy for the coalition because they appear to be a partnership and yet they're putting as much distance between themselves. <laughs> Would you do it? Yes. No way. I hate spiders. I hate moths. Moths? Moths! moths. <laughs> it's just a black oh, and white up here now. <laughs> you hate moths? It's just a black and white butterfly. <laughs> I got home the other day, right, and I saw this massive moth, right, in my bathroom. You saw a moth in your bathroom? Yeah, right? I needed to have a shower and I was too scared to go in. So what I did is I went in with this You're super... You are too scared? I went into the bathroom, right, with this super strong hairspray. What? <laughs> Seriously. And you did the moth's moth. hair? No. <laughs> I sprayed this moth, shut the door, waited for a minute, saw it on the floor, sprayed it, and then literally oh. crucified it like it was just stuck. <laughs> Poor moth is there. He's blind. He ain't blind. Is he blind? Yes. Now you feel bad, don't you? <laughs> Basically, you've gone up to a blind person and just <laughs> sprayed <laughs> hairspray in their face. <laughs> Carol, would you ever go into the jungle? What would it, what would it take? No, I wouldn't go into the jungle. Do you get offered it every year? Yeah. Every Should year I tell you call? how much they offered me yeah, this yeah, year? Yeah, 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 of course. £250,000. £250,000? And you went, no, I'm not doing it, not no. worth it. Can I go dressed I'll go as tomorrow. you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was £250,000. I'm not very good with numbers. 25. <laughs> was in the hundreds. Even it's if it's 25. I'd eat the whole kangaroo. I'd start at its yeah. feet and just eat... <laughs> I'd eat its fur, its face. I'd, I'd, eat, the, I'd eat the whole kangaroo. <laughs> I'd let the kangaroo eat my balls! <laughs> <laughs> Most people love being the centre of attention, true or false? False. Who would want to be centre of attention? <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, of all the people you know, Sean, mm. who would want to be centre of attention only? <laughs> Are you <laughs> all... Sit still, Louis. I, I'm, I don't mean to draw attention to myself or anything. I mean, really. Sure. I, <laughs> I love this. Okay. I don't think he can get up now. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I've got early onset Alzheimer's. <laughs> What about you, Joe? Do you enjoy the limelight? Y yes and no, because there's good attention and bad attention, isn't there? But I was going into um, Little, I love Little, and this old lady came <laughs> out with her husband, and she looked at me for, like, about ten seconds, which was a bit too long. And then, so I was like, oh, I'm being recognised. And then after ten seconds, she turned to her husband and went, we forgot to buy faggots. <laughs> <laughs> The guy who um, did the nearly marathon for skydive thing. The guy, <laughs> the guy who did the nearly marathon well, thing, skydive thing. it was 24 miles, thing. wasn't it? it, it well, it was, so it's yeah, nearly a marathon, isn't it? It was 23 miles up, though. That's not... I mean, traditionally how a marathon is run. <laughs> I know, but it's the same... I near could do a mileage. marathon like that. You just dropped me from 26 miles. <laughs> I reckon I'd break the world record as well. <laughs> yeah, like that. Suck on that, Paula Radcliffe. <laughs> I don't mean that. <laughs> Beforehand on the news, they were saying if if the suit fails, if the suit fails, his blood is going to boil and his eyes will pop out of his head. And you're going, wow, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Well, nothing. if you paid that much for a suit and it didn't work, my blood would boil as well. <laughs> I was hoping that they got the, they got the calculations wrong, and then when he let go, they got the gravity calculation where he'd gone up and stuck to the moon. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> or a trampoline at the bottom. He could just a bounce. Trampoline, he could have, <laughs> he could have broken the record twice if he'd had a trampoline. Or, or, or when he jumps out of that thing, there's somebody in there and they push an anvil out after him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a race to the ground. <laughs> yes, Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner became the first man to break the sound barrier by skydiving from 24 miles up. No human has travelled as fast unassisted since 1978 when Jimmy Savile heard St Mary's school choir were going on top of the pops. <laughs> From a sporting perspective, it, it's got to be the fantastic Swedish goal uh, scored by Ibrahimovic against England. Johnny, what's the thing that you're proudest of? Because I imagine that'll be for the rest of his life, that'll be the moment he's most proud of. For me, genuine, like? Yeah. You really want to know? Yeah. One time I told a builder to fuck off with a quote. One time you... A builder came round with a quote and I just opened the door. <laughs> I was in the early stages of pissing myself and I went, just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even discuss it with him. He came round and went, it's going to be about when just fuck off. <laughs> I was in the early stages of pissing myself. <laughs> it's the funniest phrase I've ever yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you open the door then? No, because he went, because, because, right, I actually thought he might have a good quote and I wouldn't mind pissing myself for the... <laughs> They actually squeeze the end of my penis and run to the toilet. <laughs> David, Rachel, uh, what else have the nation been talking about over the last week? We're getting a new labelling system for food. It's basically saying, oh, poor people are stupid. They go into a supermarket and they pick up Haribo Tang Fastics and they think it's fruit. <laughs> <laughs> People know what shit food is. The reason they eat shit food is because they work all day in an office with people they hate. <laughs> <laughs> they're working in a job that they're told every day they're going to lose, and then they go back to a shitty flat that they can't afford to buy. <laughs> and do you know what they think? I don't fancy cost cost for tea. <laughs> do you know what I fancy? A mixing bowl <laughs> full of Viennetta and chips that I eat with my fist. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 25% of people do their weekly online shop whilst in bed? I do. It helps me remember what we need. Meat, two veg, dumplings, a couple of baps. 83% <laughs> of British people admit to stealing something from a hotel room. I stayed in a hotel the other day. I decided to throw caution to the wind, opened up the minibar and I downed all the bottles of bubbly. And then I woke up and realised I was in a travel lodge and all the shampoo had disappeared. <laughs> 30% of Brits think it's acceptable to answer the phone during sex. It happens. Mum, it's for you. <laughs> what the nation have been talking about this week? The I'm a celebrity thing, isn't it? People, I think, I really, I, I can't bear on it now, is Ant and Deck, because they're like, it's gone on now, they just laugh. They're like Gaddafi's sons. <laughs> <laughs> laugh at people being tortured. They just laugh. Ah, you're being tortured, you're being bitten, you have to eat this. Then they, ah, Ah, they have more torture. There's a woman in a coffin having st insects crawling all over her face. They're just going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> You can't tire of watching people going, ha, ah, ah, ah. It's just, it just doesn't get boring. Yeah, but it's all the stuff in between where people start going, going, oh, I miss my family. I don't. They throw things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I mean, you would be incredible on the show if you were. Do, do they <laughs> offer it to you? Every year. <laughs> and every year, I happen to be in a supermarket where I can buy stuff and I don't have to beg for it. <laughs> you know when you're doing your shopping, they go, would you like to do a um, celebrity to get me out of here? Or any of them, and you're going, yeah, but you see, I'm here and I've got nine Twixes and I don't <laughs> have to do a task. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Lorraine, would you, would you go on? Absolutely, no way. I like my personal space, do you know what I mean? I don't want all these people around me all the time, getting on my nerves, having to eat anuses and willies. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Well, it's a shame. I... I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Are you more likely to buy a book if it's written by a celebrity? Yes or no? If I wrote a book, I'd call it Confessions of a Hollywood Gigolo. And then I'd, the first <laughs> sentence would be, I must confess, I have never been a gigolo in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> You've written a couple of books, haven't there? Have I wrote you? one yeah. book. No, there's two. There's the one you actually give to the Inland Revenue. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the one you give to the Inland Revenue. Have you written a book? 
Yeah, I've written a book, yeah. An autobiography? No, God, no. If I've learned anything, it's the less that people know about me, the better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a book about jokes. About jokes? Yeah, not, I mean, not, not an amazing... It's not, it's not as good as... It's not as good as this book. <laughs> What expression are you making there? What were you shooting for? Oh, this world. It looks like... It looks like a nice sort of pre-your lip transplant. That was before you had lips. What it is, is... Well, I'll just read you a small little passage. When I think about it now, the thought of my bony white body pressed up against hers and her having to tolerate my wet breath against her neck, it's a wonder to me that she was never sick into my face. <laughs> Some uh, self esteem issues there, John. <laughs> it's one of those kiss and tell books where <laughs> nobody gets What's kissed, last... but I tell anyway. What's the last sentence? The last sentence. Oh, the last chapter's you. lovely. <laughs> Here's to many more years on the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, Scottish independence. Uh, they've agreed to have a referendum on Scottish independence. They, they have indeed. They've set a date. They've set a date. Have they actually set the date? They've set the well, 2014, yes. Because they're going to let 16 and 17 year olds vote in Scotland, so they've got to give them a year to sort out babysitters and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've invented a lot of stuff. They invented the, the steam engine, the electric light bulb, the television, this expression. <laughs> <laughs> Before, when people felt like that, south of the border, they used to go... <laughs> <laughs> the fist. <laughs> <laughs> then the Scots came along and went... <laughs> <laughs> the Scottish are very... They've, they've just canned a marketing campaign. This is how confident they are with Scotland. They had this gem lined up to advertise Edinburgh. Incredinburgh! <laughs> 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 And they shelved it. They thought, we don't need it. We don't need to go there. I say every town should be advertised like that. Well done, Dee. <laughs> <laughs> Glasgow, fuck yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm proud of. Yeah, Relax, I'm everyone. Just whoa, 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 take a moment, everyone. This, is, this is the killer. Sean Locke, everyone. Yabba Dabba Dean. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 16% of women say they lie about their age from time to time? And those times are between the ages of 28 and 53. 40% <laughs> of men would rather be single than bald. So, finally, some good news for Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> and 23% of people think they're more productive when they work from home. I know I am, but that's because I'm a self-employed erection checker. <laughs> Most people think cookery shows make it look too easy. True or false? False. False, Jimmy, move on. False. Round three. Look, I'll tell you this, OK? In GBB30... No, GBBO... GBBO3, Great British Bake Off 3, that's what we say. Quicker, just to say nerve. it, I think, if you don't. <laughs> John, who did really, really well and actually won GBBO3, he made the Colosseum, the Collar Ruddy Seam, out of gingerbread. <laughs> have, you, have you tried to cook food yes. in the real world? Yes. Let's talk it through. OK. First of all, you've got to go and buy it. Yeah. Then you've got to cut it up. <laughs> then you've got to cook it. Yeah. How is that easy? <laughs> and what part, what part of that? And then you've got to apologise no, to the people you served it to. <laughs> You know, you, you look in the cupboard and you think, I don't have any of this shit in this book. Because <laughs> I've got other stuff to get on with, you know. Oh, some capsicum seeds. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where? When? Most people in that cupboard have got a, a tin of fish or something, <laughs> a tin of baked beans that have been sold to you, they were multi-pack only, but you let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just chaotic. You know, and you ain't got the pan that you need, you're trying to get the fish, you're cutting its head off, and then you're eating it with an hammer, and, you know, and you get the broccoli, and you, you, you're not allowed to sweep people's faces with it, because they don't like it. <laughs> All the time, what is in the hallway? A takeaway menu. <laughs> <laughs> A proper rapper war. I could do that. I could start a war. I oh. could do it more directly. Go on, then. Just lock down the lens and say, Oi, rappers, 
suck my balls. <laughs> Except you, you don't have to suck my balls. I'm more of a singer anyway. You're a singer. So What's I a rapper have... then? Rapper's just, um... What's a rapper? <laughs> <laughs> What's a rapper then? <laughs> he's in his cardigan there. He's in a magic ticket. I feel like I need to know. <laughs> Tell me that this rapping you do. <laughs> when does a rap become a song? Are you serious? <laughs> it's sort of. Do you, know, do you know the difference between Jay-Z and Beyonce and what they do? I know the difference well, enough to know. One's a mummy and one's a daddy. <laughs> this is so awful. If, if I say, like, uh, I went to the shop and got some chips... <laughs> you can't get chips from a shop. <laughs> Isn't it supposed to rain anyway? Chips and shop don't rain. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, only the, that's only the first well, line. Get the, get the next line out, go on. <laughs> oh, you went to the show and bought some chips. Yeah, then I got some ketchup and other dips. <laughs> Most people would rather host a house party than go to one. True or false? I don't go to many house parties anymore. I go to a lot of four, fourth and fifth children's birthday parties these days. I don't have kids. I just <laughs> prefer the food and games they play. <laughs> I like all the stuff about parties. I like doing a big shop and putting loads of nibbles out. And then I always, this is true, I genuinely realise I haven't really invited anyone. Cos <laughs> I don't really like people in my house. <laughs> it's that bit when you go to text people and you say, oh, I don't like you. Uh, I don't mind you, but not in my house. <laughs> if I invite you, I'll have to invite him. Yeah, and you'll bring your girlfriend and touch each other and talk about it. <laughs> Come to my house and fiddle in my conservatory. Not on my snacks. <laughs> you want to be in love, you stay at home and cater for yourself. <laughs> Bloody travelling chef for your sex games. <laughs> Don't put that on the invite, though. <laughs> Is it the Rolling Stones? Uh, back on the road, man. <laughs> I think they look like a great collection of Toby jugs. <laughs> They said they might play Greg Glastonbury, haven't they? Yeah, they said they might play Glastonbury. They might do, year. if yeah. the weather's all right. No, if they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the massive road crew, they have one guy whose job is just to iron Keith before they... <laughs> <laughs> he just puts Keith out. <laughs> all right, more like, oh, Keith, yeah, you need for tonight. We're on in a couple of hours. So yeah, lift you up there. You know. Their greatest hits album, this is the shittest album title I've ever heard. Their greatest hits album is going to be called... Grrr. <laughs> I think what it was is they were typing greatest hits and one of them just fell asleep on the keyboard. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> They're Starbucks, the coffee people. <laughs> They're <doing laughs> They've been a bit naughty. What have they done? The Starbucks. What have they done? <laughs> <laughs> what have they done? They've Nothing. been at it, haven't they? They've not been paying tax. They don't pay any tax. They managed to sell. <laughs> 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 Get your head round that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> but they've, they've managed to make their books appear that they're losing money, and basically what they do is they they take the losses from other countries and lump them onto the business here. It's endemic. It's not just the company as well. Some of the staff as well. Look. <laughs> Earlier this year. Just after a meeting with their accountant. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> they are one of the few places you can have a coffee and watch women getting their tits out. <laughs> There's a mother's breastfeeding, you think. <laughs> In my one, where, where I am, there's like a, a thing there and there's all bushes on it and when the breastfeeding mothers come in, you can just peep through the bushes <laughs> like that. It's almost like they're saying, oh, go on, enjoy your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just like, do you know that this is being recorded? <laughs> There's a new TV show, Jimmy. <laughs> it's a brand new they, show. They call it The X Factor. <laughs> right. And they get these singers, and I, I mean, it's too early to tell what's going to happen next. <laughs> also, you use the word singers in inverted commas. Yeah. I've stopped doing them, I just do it with my speech now. These, these singers, or professional crying penises. <laughs> They're crying already. It's going to get worse. I wouldn't drink the water around the X-Factor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they put something in the tea. 
and you can get the most hard-hearted person. Well, drink the tea and just go. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a pigeon. <laughs> If there is a drink that makes you cry, it's almost certain that Heston made it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a special type of tea that brings melancholy. <laughs> it, and it's actually made with melons and collie dogs. <laughs> <laughs> of course it bloody is, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just... Don't they just call that, like, red wine? Isn't that what you drink to cry? I drink red wine, I'd bore my eyes out for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. What have you got to cry about? All your dreams have come true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't your know what my dreams are. Your you sock drawers are immaculate. Cardi. <laughs> you got a cardi and people listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got their swaps? <laughs> are you, are you, you're not actually collecting the stickers, are you? Yes. <laughs> the, pan the Panini stickers book. Yeah, but I didn't want it to come out like this. <laughs> I, thought I'd I thought I'd at least entice a girl back to my bedroom before I brought out my swaps. <laughs> How many do you need now? How many do I need? Um, 250 stickers and one girlfriend. <laughs> Does anyone have the England shiny? It's dreadful, the shiny. It's not the official badge because it's not licensed because we go with Merlin. But uh, I'm not doing the stickers because I'm cool. <laughs> Weirdo alert. <laughs> Are you doing the stickers? John well? is doing the stickers. I've swapped with John. You're collecting the stickers. I am acquiring stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you two are collecting stick your grown <laughs> men. Me and Josh were together in Greenwich last week, weren't we? Yeah. We went on the hunt for stickers. <laughs> <laughs> On or is it just the pictures of the blokes? Oh, now she's interested. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. Uh, that, um... Oh, I need that. <laughs> Theo Walcott, I'll swap you. Oh. This may be the most tragic thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much what the news agent said when I said he'd do the stickers, and he just looked at both of us and went, No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the pleasure of it? The pleasure is in the putting the stickers exactly in the lines. <laughs> I think if it was scratch cards, it'd be worth it, but not what you're doing. You look at me like I'm filthy, like I've just admitted that I like to shit on dead hedgehogs or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're doing is just a little bit... I mean, if it was... Why is a scratch card better than a sticker book? Because you, like... I like the way you've got really outraged <laughs> from <laughs> like, Why is that really bad? Hey, a, a scratch card's a pound and a packet of stickers is 50p, so financially I'm up straight away. <laughs> <laughs> When you scratch a scratch card, you, you throw it away, you bin it. When I collect a sticker, that's in my book and I've got that forever. <laughs> John started this conversation by pretending he didn't collect the stickers. Uh, <laughs> and now it's come out, he's the biggest ambassador for them in Britain. <laughs> Here's an amazing statistic. Going into this tournament in the Euros, England have never won their first game, have never beaten Sweden in a competitive match, and have never beaten the host of the tournament. I learned that in a sticker book. <laughs> of course. Yes, Euro 2012. At the time of recording, we don't know the result of the England-Sweden match. So, to be safe, I'll do two versions. Bad luck, England, and well done, Sweden. <laughs> John, uh, <laughs> we've got Gemma here for a reason. Gemma, the, the Leverton Inquiry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know what it's all about. <laughs> Is this about the politicians being corrupt, three of them? Weren't they bribed and paid off? I do know about this. I hope that to thing? God you are called to the Leveson inquiry. That would, <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best TV of all time. Is Levington a place, then? Is Levington a place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is the Leveson inquiry. <laughs> I'm starting to so realise the point? true consequence. If the only way is Essex, we are all knackered. <laughs> Well, leave me alone. You're from Essex. I'm from well. Essex. Yeah. What do you think of the Leverton inquiry? But they're all contradicting each other, so it's a bit pointless because yeah, they're supposed to tell the truth, and isn't it? It's probably illegal for them to lie in this inquiry. But then they're completely one saying this happened, the other one saying it definitely didn't happen. No, but if the if the Rebecca Wade thing, she keeps coming out and saying one day the truth about all this will come out, and you go.